I get the cheat code, I'm a beast They should've never let me out of lease Stop out of cap, I'm just tryna see You really back what you talk on the beat They put me in, I'ma walk on the beat I eat my plate and it make me obese I been pushing lyrics like a kingpin And when the day we got no rest Hey, what's hey. up guys? Hold How on. are you guys doing? I'm good, I, I'm I'll turning read. off my devices because I'm disruptive and I apologize <laughs> You're disruptive without the devices For being tardy to the party I'm turning mine off too What's I'm, going on, how's everybody? My baby uh, daddy's in the house Shout out days. Capo, I love you so hey, hey, fucking hey. much <laughs> Yeah, shout out to her baby daddy Capo Woohoo that's the big dog. What's going on, everybody? Shout out to y'all. Listen, they've been buying merch. Y'all been going crazy on the website, buying merch awesome. and coffee mugs, and y'all getting into the real holiday spirit. I'm wearing some merch too. At, in January, for the for the our Hispanic watchers and for our our African watchers, Kwanzaa, you know that extends beyond into the year. But for our Latin brothers and sisters, uh, at Dia los Reyes Magos, the Day of the Three Kings, you buy gifts. So buy more sweaters and more coffee mugs and give them the people you love. I love that. Thanks. Yeah. I heard. Is that him for us to buy you stuff? No, no, that's an actual thing. Like. People, you know, when, obviously when Christ was born, the people that were there, if you know, believe in the religious story of it. I feel like the, I was the, there. The fable of it. <laughs> you give them gifts. But the three kings, when they heard that he was born, they had to travel. Yes. So they came from different parts of, you know, the, the world, the, world. the kingdom, with their camels with and their stuff. With their frankincense and, and, they brought, and So growing up in Miami, that was something that we looked forward to was the parade after Christmas. Mm. Mm -hmm. That was like the Hispanic Christmas parade. It was the American Christmas parade was with the old St. Nick's fat ass and running around in the sleigh with the elves and... You bring the Chicos for some odd reason. We got to bring camels and donkeys and goats and like, yeah, there's no Christmas trees. There's hay. It's fun though. It was exciting. So for all you Hispanic guys, you still got about another month to buy stuff. There we go. Yeah. So, so chop away. You know how we've talked about mental health. That was not a segue, but you know how we've talked about mental health here so many times. I saw a documentary that was really quite amazing. It was Jonah Hill uh -huh. and um, Stutz. Stutz. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. The great thing about it is when he made this documentary, he shot it because he wanted to share what his um, psychiatrist gave changed to his him. Changed his life. It did change his life. But what's really amazing is the night that I watched it, I was really stressed out. So I'm like, well, let me just try this, this gratitude thing that he's talking about. And I'm a, I'm a very grateful person to begin with. But one of the skills that he taught really helped me that night. Okay. And I'm like, wow, this shit really works. Come on, elaborate. Give mm. me to me. Okay, Pause. Well, I'm happy. To <laughs> Come on, sensei. <laughs> sensei, why, oh, wise one. Snatch these pebbles from my hands. Yes. So he talked about, you know how you run down the list in your head of all the things that you're grateful for? Yes. And it gives you like that warm, fuzzy feeling like yes. in your chest? Yes. Well, he was saying to run down that list, but take that feeling that you get and instead of, keep instead of keeping on with the list stop that take that feeling and just let that feeling radiate from you and it changed my attitude it changed my mindset it changed what i was focusing on because what i was focusing on was kind of negative and it really worked mm. and that's one of the tools that's in this documentary it was pretty amazing watch it if you have a chance yeah i love it i love the fact that some of these you know some of these people can can have enough resources where they can invest all of their time in recovering yeah. or in finding or discovery. Yeah. Unfortunately, most people aren't mega actors and can't afford top-notch therapists. Correct. And can't take six months to go sit in the, you know, in the Swiss Alps and right. find themselves. Most people have to do that while juggling a career and being a mom or being a dad. I think or you tending have to prioritize to it because yeah, there are sliding scales for people thing, that can't afford That's the thing is that you know it. prioritizing you yes is is the root yes. of most therapy. It's just like hey man because it affects you and everybody around you. Yeah, you're you're, you're going to be no good to nobody else if you're no good to yourself. You're right. But my you're only right. thing would and if I could chime in, please, um, what to prioritize first? Because you have all these priorities, and you know, as an adult, you in your mind you think, okay, I got to pay my bills. Right. That's the first thing you think about. Right. Well, when you have to pay your bills, now you have to work a little bit more on might be something that doesn't focus on what you really want to prioritize, which could be your music, could be Success your goals. Success versus your survival. Correct. Now your your priority is to survive. That's right. right. And you need to survive to be able to do anything else. Right. I got to survive to be, be able. I got to be able to know that I'm surviving to be able to focus on success. If I can't worry about pushing your record if I'm worried about paying my light bill. You're yeah. right. But if you're in the right mind state, you're going to be better at everything, including making money. So even if you have to do like telehealth and spend 50 minutes on a Zoom call with somebody that can help you become a better you, I just feel like that's a good use of your time. Yeah. 
and your effort. It's an investment into you, into your mental health. Exactly. I love it. it. One of, of the first lessons I ever learned from men is that people spend time doing what matters to them. Hmm. So if something's a priority, somebody will find time. Hmm. And even if you're busy paying your bills and you've got a career and you've got kids and you've got a significant other, if you find the time to do something that's going to benefit yourself and make you a better human being, that's going to benefit everybody. Yeah. Amen. My only thing which makes sense would be like a, a artist and I bring it back to the artists in the industry um, who may be suffering from PTSD and doesn't know how and now and, and, and they're probably bipolar. Um, <laughs> so if you have the PTSD and you're bipolar, you're you're th- these different people's different people at random times. Uh, how do you realize that you have to go get help, that you have to go speak to somebody or that you have to look at something in a positive way versus looking at it as it's war all the time? Right. Because that's what that's the environment that you're in. It's right. like a war zone. Right. Um, and it's kill or be killed. Eat or be eat. I got to take your food because predator or prey. I'm gonna. I need something to eat. Right. Uh. So how do, how does that happen when you're an artist and maybe you're a manager managing an artist and you can't even say, damn, I, I wish I can help you, but I can't give you all my money because right. I'm not gonna have no money. Right. So how do you as a manager deal with an artist that has that's bipolar and has that's suffering from PTSD that maybe doesn't want to get help. Is this, would calm. that be a clinical diagnosis or would that be a self-diagnosed? I don't, I, I can't I don't help know. nobody that has never been clinically diagnosed right. by anything. Right. Yeah. Cause you have a lot of people that are diagnosed by YouTube Yes. and you have, can I tell you something? I had a yeah, conversation cool. Let's do it. with a young kid recently, real young. And, and they were telling me that they were depressed and they felt they were suffering from bipolar disorder. And it kind of caught me aback. And I was like, well, what would make you feel that way? Have you been to a doctor and they told you, they're like, no, but my, me and my friends talk about it. So your friends, well, c- can you spell depression? Uh, so you mean to tell me that you and your friends that don't know how to use the word have convinced each other that you're all that suffering you're all, from you're depression. All bipolar. And you're bipolar. <laughs> Not facts. I agree. So, you yeah. know, I, yeah. man, listen, bro, everybody is dealing with something. That's why you, you got to be mindful of that first and foremost. Facts. Right? That's why most people that have been to the penitentiary and come out, they can survive and flourish in the real world because you're going to have to live by that. You know, listen, man, don't disturb. Don't bother. Don't ask no questions. Do you. That, that's the best way that you could do it. Now, if you care about somebody and you see somebody that's suffering and they're doing they're going through something and you can help change that and you're in a position to. That's that's the price that you pay for your space on Earth. We've talked about this in a past episode. Yeah. I think mental health is something I have. The, I'm the first one that tells you I don't take my own advice. I don't rest. I don't go to sleep when I'm tired. I go to sleep when I'm exhausted. Mm. I don't back away when I feel getting woozy. I push myself to get it done. And then I'll go to bed and I'll be asleep for three hours and then wake up because my mind still hasn't stopped moving from when I stopped and went to bed. So now I'm up off three hours sleep trying to do it all over again. No, no, I don't want no food because that 30 minutes that I'm going to have to stop and go get something to eat, I could have been using to be productive here. And no, I can't take your phone call because you're going to break my train of thought. I'm going to forget what I'm doing. I'm the first person, I'm the, and that's why I have zero sympathy for it. That's why I have zero understanding for anybody that wants to play in the same, <clears throat> that wants to be an athlete like me and is not willing to sacrifice like me. I have zero understanding, zero patience, and zero tolerance. Get the fuck out of my face. I've lost everything I've ever loved and everything I've ever wanted to have and cared for behind chasing this dream. And you aren't willing to make that same sacrifice I'm not even saying that you have to make that sacrifice. Or even a lesser sacrifice. But can you, we got to start climbing up to the top of this mountain, bro. And I got to know that when we get up here, if it takes for you to jump, you got to jump blindly. I got to know you. There, there can be no talking me down on the way up. Man, I don't know if I could do this, bro. Did anybody else make it from this? No. You got to be, there has to be conviction in you. And, and unfortunately, bro, most people aren't suffering from mental health that, that are not clinically diagnosed. Let me, let me walk that dog back in the park. If you have not been clinically diagnosed, then you have an attention problem and you feel sad and you feel less than and worthless because you've allowed yourself to be compared to celebrities mm-hmm. and supermodels and the uber rich. One of our coders made a point in the comments in one of our past videos, rich people use social media differently than poor people do. That's it in a nutshell. 
It's what we consume. It's what we put in our minds. So if you feel that you're depressed because you're not doing enough, maybe it's them fucking videos of everybody in the Maldives that's in the same age range as you that you feel have. Maybe that's what's ruining or warping taking your that, mind. Taking that bath and it's in grease. putting that burden right. on you that you feel you have to compete with those people. Right. That brings us back to that checklist that you were happy for and then putting that out there on the earth. I had this conversation just recently with one of my, my younger kids. They were in the car. They were... One of them got a toy and the other one says, man, your toy is nicer than mine. I wish I had one as nice as yours. Well, hold on a second. Y'all both got a toy on the same day. You can't be appreciative and thankful for the fact that you have a toy as well. Now it's comparison and comparison is the thief of joy. The problem with comparison also is artists tend to use that as motivation, but sometimes it backfires as could be jealousy, could be Envy. envy. It could be all these different things. But in their mind, it's a, a motivation. But now they're, they're 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 comparing themselves again. We talked about this again. They're comparing themselves to a finished product, someone who has a record label who has generated ninety million dollars for their record label that they're signed to. You are an up and coming artist, and you're standing next to this guy. He fucks with you, but you're comparing yourself to him is the worst thing that you could ever do. Because now you're taking that out on your team and wondering why things aren't moving. Well, sir, you're not generating $90 million for your right. team. This man is right. with four publicists and a label and his own team that he pays. You have a team that you don't pay, and these people are just trying to figure it out and help you. So to that, you say what? The filter, man. You, you can't gotta, compare. You cannot. You got to have a filter, you man. You have to. There has to be something where you're rooted in. If I see somebody... The day that Gilly and Wallow got $100 million for their podcast, I went back and started to watch it all. I want to know how you got $100 million. I'm so happy that you were able to achieve that, that I would like to know how you achieved it so that I might be able to replicate or mimic those results with the current podcast that I'm sitting on. But you can't do that just from watching episodes because you don't know who they know or what they did with their business plan or what they gave up to get that. What There's I can so say many is facts you don't there are have. a lot of things that I can see that they've done. I'm glad you said that. Yes. That I can know exactly what not to do. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. But mm-hmm. what I can know is that there people aren't tuning into their podcast because of any other reason than the content that they're creating and knowing how to take that content and put that content on a bigger platform. Those relationships played a lot with it. The timing of it. There are a lot of different factors but going in and looking at the content and understanding, and this is where an artist may compare themselves to a Gunna or to a, a Lucci or to the Easter Bunny or to Elvis Presley or to Caesar or to whoever. Mm. It's that understanding what their goal was or understanding the, the line that they've crossed and then figuring out what they did to get there. What was their timeline? Unless you know the in, insides and out, you're not going to get, oh, we use this person or that person. But you can look at it and you can see. You can see a rollout. You can see what led up to it. You can go back and see how many different pieces they may have had for it. You, it didn't take a rocket scientist to know that the minute Metro and them dropped that, that video of old boy riding through the city in a tour bus lighting the city on fire, that it was going to be one of the greatest marketing schemes and has landed the most number, the most successful producer album in hip hop history because of a rollout. Not because of anything else. Because of a rollout. There was no music playing in that video. There was two act, three actors, a, a city bus, and fire. And that's what caught it caught your attention so much so that when you seen who it was, two days later, the track list comes out. Still no music. Then it drops, and seven days later, it's the number one album for a producer. Of course, there's a way that you can look at it and see what they've done. The problem is that <laughs> most people don't want to do that. They want to see Metro get it there, and they be oh, I make beats as good as him. Shit, let me go try to do the same thing, and it doesn't work I, that I way. I was just about to get to it. They'll see something, and then they'll replicate it. The problem with that is you're a replica, and you're not an original. But that's skill. That's a question of skill. That has That's a question of talent. Talent can be refined. Skill can be improved. I think it was one of our artists said, the biggest room in the world is improvement. The room for improvement, my brother. That's why Jordan was as dominant as he was. That's why LeBron James is as dominant. That's why 2 Chains is as dominant. That's why these guys are as dominant because they work out every single day, whether it's in the business acumen, whether it's in the music world, whether it's on on mental health, whether it's venturing out and trying new things and going on and becoming podcasters or television hosts or whatever it is. 
They're always working. And that's the sign of greatness. Not somebody, if a shark stops moving, it drowns. One of the most feared hunters in the ocean. If it stops moving, it drowns. Mm. If Be I like stop moving, I drown too. Be like a shark. Be like a shark. Be ferocious. Okay. Hi, Cheat Code. I have a question for all three of you goats. I'm a music producer. I have, I've been a longtime listener of yours. I sit at my desk at my day job and literally write notes as I listen. I study the game, stay humble, and have sought out membership. I've been producing since 2010, and, and like you said, success is definitely, definitely not overnight. Lots of failures, lesson learned. My biggest accomplishment just happened a few months ago when I became a member of Timberland's Beat Club. In your opinion, what else should I do to reach my goal of having a full-time career as a producer? Thank you for your time, Vanessa. Ooh, a female producer. Yay. You know, stems are a thing now. Um, all kinds of sounds. It's, you know, it's... When you go to the gym, you don't just go jump on the, on the dumbbells or the bench press. You know, you have to have leg day. So I say all that to say, you know, are you diversifying as a producer? Are you, have you made beats for Grand Theft Auto? Have you found out who to submit beats to for Grand Theft Auto? Have you made any beats for Madden? Have you made beats for NBA? Have you made beats for MLB? Have you made beats for NASCAR? Have you made beats for Need for Speed? Have you developed any of these type of new sounds? Are you, are you coming up with sounds? Are you creating bells and dings and, and changing the frequency and then being the first person to introduce that into a digital market where I think uh, Serato just unveiled the stem player for DJs. Correct. To where now DJs are able to go in there and play with the stems on a record similar to the Donda stem player, but they can now do that on their Pioneer mixing board Correct. with their MacBook. That's going to create a whole different sound. Serato 3.0, by the way. So all of these things are important. <laughs> and as a producer, if you're not trying to take advantage of all of those things, maybe go out and find 10 content creators, 10 YouTubers, and you know, maybe set a threshold. They have to have 15,000 subscribers. And then go in and see which ones don't have jingles, which ones don't have an intro song. We have an intro song. Shout out to Wavy Pluto, mm -hmm. right? So find out which ones do interviews. Which one of these platforms, like We The Family, 1090 Jake, which one of these platforms that are doing the, the urban crime of uh, YouTubing and vlogging, find out which one of them guys are getting views and putting out content consistently and work with them and get them some music, some original content so that their content, once it's shared on some of these platforms, can go even further because it's not borrowed or stolen from somebody else or regurgitated. It's completely <laughs> original. And, and But again, that requires research, that requires effort, that requires a little bit more than just waking up and turning on the fucking the keyboard. I think a great plan of attack would be to spend time with artists in your region that have a little bit of, of buzz going on. You know, you can, you can create a, you can randomly send beats to somebody which doesn't really work, or you can create relationships with people so that they spend time listening to your beats and spend time with you, working with you. That's going to take some work. I think also once you, this is really directed to like the mid-level producers because we always talk about like how to get on as a producer, right? I've got videos ad nauseum on my YouTube channel talking about that. But once you're already making beats and you're kind of at that mid-level and you're struggling to get to that next level, I think a great way to really attract attention is to make a playlist with all of the songs that you've produced that are out. Don't leak anybody's music and don't put something out for an artist that you've already um, produced for and the song isn't out. Don't do that because you're going to make enemies. But the stuff that's already out in the marketplace, if you create a playlist and people hear what you've done song after song after song, it gives them an idea of who you are as a producer and it will bring people to you. You've got to reach out to artists and A&R people when they're in the mindset of making music because you can't reach somebody in January and expect them to remember to reach out to you if they don't record until June. And there are artists that are still on that business cycle, record cycle, right? So you've got to be in their face 12 months a year. You've got to be constantly in their face. What about a newsletter? Letting people know what you're doing. If, if I'm opening an email and I'm seeing what you're doing every month, 
all of a sudden in my mind, you're moving and you're moving forward. And we all want to do business with people that have movement and people that are moving forward and people that have success. Success breeds success. No, facts. Uh, I'm, I'll keep mine quick because they did a gr- great job. Uh, I was going to say, just look around you. Uh, like maybe sh- like Shauna, if she does a cooking show and she may need an instrumental for the background. She did yesterday. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like you need to pay attention to everything. And I, I'm a big fan of producers growing with the artists. So I always look to new artists and they and when they gravitate with the producer and I'm over here like, oh, okay, I remember this artist. And, and I remember the producer. When Lil Baby came out, cut that shit up, Quay. You heard that on everything. You knew when you heard that shit. And Metro we, Boomin. A uh, Metro Boomin. Um, uh, uh, Wheezy out of here. I remember that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I remember those with Gunna and all that. Uh, yep. tur- run that up, Turbo. Jetson. I, I, Jetson with, with Buddha blessed his beat. I, they grew with the artist. Yes. And that was dope. So I would say just look around you. It's it's ways that you can get that beat out, those beats out. I and, suggest, uh, and don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Because yeah. most of these artists that are in their cities that are hot and popular are street artists. Yeah. And you're going to have a hard time as a young female producer trying to, hey, I just want to come in the session and vibe with you guys for five hours tonight because that's what they said on the cheat code. I need to do it. That's just going to get you killed or put in a bad predicament. What you need to do is have you some business acumen. And you're exactly right. Have a relationship with these DJs. Have a relationship with these artists in these cities. Have a relationship with the studios. How about that? Yeah. How about you have a relationship That's with the great engineers? Yes. So when somebody comes in and is, hey man, throw some shit on, you can say, Oh, hold on, bro. I got a pack from my bro. Have a That's beat how I met Hey Zaytoven. man, pull up at the studio. I'm here ready. with so and so right now. That's how I met Zaytoven. I think the engineer that, called him and said, Yo, come meet Wendy Day. I, I think that would be I think that would be as as much as some of these because a lot of these producers are are at home studios, you know, with the ability right. to create studio in a box. These guys are making beats in the crib. Right. So if they're at home, a lot of these guys aren't going into the, the old world. Dallas Austin studio right. and becoming London on the track from sleeping in this place right. 24 hours, seven days a week. A lot of these guys are doing it at home because they're recluses or because they're introverts or because they have social anxiety. And some of the most talented people in the world don't know how to be around other people. So to get them and try to put them in a room to where they already don't feel they're respected, they already feel that they're going to get hard. taken advantage of, they're already in fear for their safety. There are so many different factors right. that it, it may make a bad decision worse. So what I would suggest is get you some beat packs. Get As a producer, ready. making them and keep tabs I on them. I have all that anxiety. Everything Dropbox. you just mentioned is Dropbox. is is so me and I've I've pushed past it. If I can do it, y'all can do it. Facts. Yeah. It's just, just you know, it. it's instead of feel the fear. You always anyway. have to keep your head on a swivel, but understanding that you're gonna do whatever it takes to make it home at the end of the night safe and with all of your functions and all of your digits and whatever it is you left the house with. That should be enough confidence to get you through any conversation, man. Just understand, believe in your ability to make it home more so than you believe in anybody else's ability to stop you from making it home. Cheat code. Cheat code. Get a mug. <laughs>